Hello, is that Peter? Hi, it's Stephen. It's Peter. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. No, sorry about that. I, I, I'm actually in my car, but I've got four. But I've tried to log in, so I tried changing my password, changed that, and then it's just it says there's something wrong with Microsoft or something. Oh, that's okay. So, yes, Skype can be a nightmare. I had to get my girlfriend to download it for me, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> very, very hands-on okay. with the technology either. Listen, thanks for taking the time no, out anyway. Um, no problem. If I can, if you're okay, I'll just rattle off a few questions. Basically, this podcast it's going to be themed around it's mainly lifestyle, fashion, um, but this one's a little bit more sports orientated. So I've previously okay. in- interviewed George Foreman, so he'll be on the episode with you. And I just wanted okay. to get into like the mindset of you know the winning mentality, what it takes to be a champion. You know, probably all the questions you've been mm-hmm. asked a thousand times before, but um, I'll try and make them a little bit more uh, <laughs> a little bit more interesting okay. if, if I can. Um, so, if I can introduce you, uh, Stephen Hendry, I'm trying to get all your titles, so I, I wrote it down, is it it's MBE, <laughs> MBE, seven times world snooker champion, um, I'll, I'll give it a whirl and then fix it in post if I, uh, if I fuck it up. Okay. Okay, uh, so, on the podcast now, we're speaking to Stephen Hendry, seven times world snooker champion and world number one for, cons- for eight consecutive seasons. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm very well, thanks. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, so, Stephen, just if you could just give us a little bit of background to what got you into snooker, but but also what it takes to be a champion. Is it natural talent? How much of it is it practice? How much is it confidence? If you could just uh, elaborate a little, please. Um, well, I mean, I first, I first got into snooker, I was given a small table, a toy table, um, which is about a quarter the size of a full-size one for my uh, Christmas, sort of two weeks before my 13th birthday. Um, I'd never played snooker before, n- n- never watched snooker. Um, so, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was a complete surprise as a present. Um, but when I, within a couple of weeks, I, I was making 50 breaks in it. Um, didn't really realise... I was that good, but obviously I, th- I just thought it was just something everyone could play. It wasn't really until I started moving, you know, going go to the local club and playing people, playing my mates and playing my dad and my, my relatives. I thought, you know, there might be something in it. Um, so obviously, you know, answering the sort of second part of your, your question, talent, you've got to be born with a talent to play snooker. Um, you know, if you're born without the talent, you know, there's no way you're going to be, become a professional and be successful. Um, but so allied to that is obviously a lot of hard work. Um, my manager that took me on when I was sort of 15, 16, prior to turning pro at 16, instilled in me a, 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 a tremendous work ethic, work ethic that, that made me sort of practice six, seven hours a day, seven days a week. Right. Well. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think in all sports you have you have to really work hard. But I think in individual sports um, it, it's even more important. Um, like golf, and you just have to because it's all about repetition um, and, and, and repeating and repeating the things over and over and over again. Um, but then when you get to obviously being successful and, and, and actually the, the, what separates people, you know, the great from the good in terms of winning, um, it's about being able to play your best best snooker in, in the sort of most pressurized situations, which is what I've, I've always been able to do. Um, and I've always been greedy for more success. You know, I, I would win a tournament on a Sunday night and be back practicing on a Monday morning and want to win the next one. So, so, so greed, um, which comes naturally as a Scotsman probably, um, is, is, is an important aspect as well. And what were you looking to achieve from the outset? I mean, were you looking to go, right, I'm going to crack the record of Reardon and Davis and I'm going to get seven world champions? Or were you just looking to be, at the time, I guess, as success, successful as you could be? Well, when I was a professional at 16, um, I was the youngest. And, and, and lots of people said um, to my father, and my management, and, and even to me, that it was a big mistake. I should have stayed as an amateur for another two or three years, really sort of, Learned, learned the game and, and, and said that would be, you know, it, it, would, it would destroy me turning pro so early. But we, we basically took the, the, the thought that there was nothing else I could learn as an amateur. Um, I wanted to be in with the big boys, playing in the best best conditions. Um, so, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a, a decision I took. <laughs> Sorry, did you hear that? Yeah, have you got a cow in the car with you? <laughs> 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 it was a, it was a long. Um, I need to switch because that's going to go off again. Hang, hang on a second. That's okay. Go for it. <laughs> sorry, still there. Yeah, yeah, no, no trouble. Go for it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really. Weird. I mean, if someone had. had, had uh, 
Sorry, do you just want me to carry on? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Follow on. All right, okay, okay. Um, you'll be able to do all that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm keeping it in. I love the nuances. So. <laughs> all right, okay. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. That was my alarm to remind me about the interview, and I put it on snooze. Ah, um, I get you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's when it was, if someone said when I was 16 turning pro that obviously I would achieve what I've achieved, I would say they were absolute nuts. You know, when, when I turned pro, no one in Scotland had ever been successful in, in snooker. So so there was no history there. There was no reason to, to say that I was going to be any different. Um, but I won my first major event when I was 18, uh, the Rothmans Grand Prix. I beat Steve Davis on the way, which was the first time I'd beaten him as well. And sort of from then on, I sort of thought, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I want to be the best at this. Um, I mean, as I did say a quote when I turned pro at 16, I'd be world champion by the time I was 21. Uh, which a lot of people thought was was mental, and 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 probably I didn't believe it in myself a hundred percent, but I did achieve that. Um, I, you know, I was world champion at twenty one, um, and and as soon as I won it the first time, obviously the goal then was to win it seven. Mm. I mean, uh, we'll get onto that a little bit later, but the because um, I've got I've got a thousand and one questions to ask you about that, so that's fine. Uh, but right, when okay. you um, so look, when you had won your first tournament, you beat Jimmy White eighteen twelve, I believe. Um, were you the underdog going into that, and did you prefer to be the underdog when you were playing? I, I don't think I was underdog in that match because uh, having, I beat John Parrott in the semi final to become world number one. Um, so, so probably, I, probably, I was, I was the favourite to win the match. Right. Um, but still, it was, it was still my first world final. Mm. So. It, there was still that aspect of it, but to be honest, after after getting to world number one and and winning, I didn't I didn't see any reason any way that I was going to lose that match. Mm. Um, I just went into the final so confident, so you know I, I just I just didn't even entertain the, the the slightest possibility of losing. But that's all at the age of twenty one. So where do you think the confidence came from? Was it beating Davis? Obviously, Davis had this. Perhaps he's coming to an end of an era himself, but he had this aura, as uh, Barry Hearn would say. Mm. And that slowly got dismantled yeah, yeah. towards the end. So, did you kind of garner it from that experience and and beating these professionals? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's strange that I had the, this sort of winning mentality sticker because I haven't had it in any of anything else I've ever done in my life. You know, <laughs> I, I played sport at school, but 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 to, to no no great level. Um, I wasn't very you know I wasn't a scholar. I wasn't very academic. So there's nothing that this really this this sort of killer instinct this this will to win. That, you know, manifested itself until I played snooker. Um, so yeah, I mean, as, as I said before, when I, I played Steve Davis maybe fifteen, sixteen times and lost every time. So mm-hmm. when I was eighteen and beat him on the way to that first major, that that was a big stepping stone for me because he was. Although Jimmy White was sort of, when I first sort of started playing snooker at thirteen, fourteen, I loved watching Jimmy. But when I turned pro and wanted to be serious, there was only one man to sort of model yourself on and 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 and, and get close to, and that was Steve Davis because he was the only one that was winning, winning everything. Yeah. So, so how much also? I mean, it, it's kind of interesting you say that you liked watching Jimmy because his style was perhaps the polar opposite of yours. I mean, he you had a very solid game, um, a very cutthroat, ruthless game, and and Jimmy was mm. quite flamboyant. Maybe played to the galleries a few too many times. Also, mm. I guess his lifestyle was some way interfering with his game because it was very erratic off the table. How much do you mm. feel like your life and your game was congruent, and that's perhaps adding to what you did um i think i think my, our, our games are pretty similar um you know i mean obviously the, the, jimmy would not would play the sort of sort of big the big screw shots at the end if he'd, if he'd already won the frame but in terms of like attacking and, and, and quick snooker we we're pretty similar mm. um but i just think i had i had um i had the the, the, the better you know the, the stronger mentality I and mean, it's as simple as that i mean you know Jim, jimmy's been in six world finals and, and failed to win any of them so that shows you there's something missing there um, and obviously, you, you mentioned about his lifestyle, and Jimmy's been very open about the fact that he, he, he was, you know, he, he, he liked to party, the gamble, and everything that went with it. But I, I tend to think that if Jimmy didn't do those things, then, then he wouldn't maybe be even as successful as he was. Because if you took that away from Jimmy, it wouldn't be him. Mm. You know, I think if you put him in a club six hours a day, seven days a week, I think he would, it would, it would kill his enthusiasm for the game um, at that time. Um, so perhaps he wouldn't have even done as well as he, as, as he did. But um, but yeah, so, so it was it was a similar sort of game that we, we played, but obviously I think I, I was a lot stronger and I was able to play better on, on the bigger occasions. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you, how many times did you play him in the final? I think it was five times. Was, I mean, he wasn't really your nemesis, I guess, because you had the rub on him in the World Championships, even though he mm. 
uh, beat you in other events as well. You know, it wasn't just a completely mm. one-sided yeah, affair. Yeah. Um, but at the time, did you really have someone that you hated playing or someone that you loved playing? Um, not, not really, not really. I mean, I, I, I there's a sort of late, late, later on, um, you know, there, there was, I mean, one of the matches that still, still, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night in a shiver, I was losing to Peter Ebden in the final once. Um, basically, cause with, with the, the type of game he played, um, you know, he, he was a quite slow, he was quite a slow, de- deliberate player, and, and he would mm. play shots that you didn't expect uh, to see played by, by by a professional, to be to be frank. He played a completely different game, which obviously, you know, got him to be world champion, which, which no one no one can take anything away from that. But I played him in the final and, and, and really didn't expect him to beat me over, over four sessions. But uh, and due to my sort of bad attitude in that match, you know, expecting to win rather than going out and, and, and being ruthless, um, it, it cost me that world title. Right. I mean, I kind of miss the old Peter Ebden, the one that would shout and throw his fists around the table after winning a game. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I know he's not really in, he's not competing as much as he used to. He's uh, obviously qualifying for matches and stuff. But there was a, mm-hmm. you know, that he he would be something that you would watch and perhaps look up on YouTube and see crazy reactions mm-hmm. to his game. But anyway, sorry, I digress. But yeah, you were then... Um, uh, but interestingly, though, you went on to beat him to win the se- the seventh world title is that correct yes yes so um yeah. what i wanted to bring up was something... hey, sorry sorry mark, mark williams mark, 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 oh, mark williams uh, my, my apologies uh, so what i wanted to bring up was something similar that i spoke to with george foreman and when he got beat by ali he he got beat heavily and then came back in in a sense and you know had numerous comebacks but his life was pretty much that was the crossroads in his life and mm-hmm. i remember hearing in an interview with you ages ago about how you won that title and you said it was all down to Marcus Campbell beating you 9-0 in a UK championship. You said you owed it everything to him. Uh, I know you probably don't want to (laughs) remember and talk too much about the game itself, but how much was that? And and does everyone, do you think, need to have a few hits to to make a comeback? I think think that was... um... That was a massive. I mean, that was a, up up to winning my seven world title. It was a massively poor season I was having. Um, I mean, not only did I lose nine nil to Marcus Campbell, um, which was which was bad enough. Um, I lost twice to Tony Drago, a player who I'd never lost in my whole career. Um, so so yeah, it was a it was a poor season. Um, I, I I sort of I went back to um, I had a, I had an old coach called Frank Callan, who's sadly departed us now, but um, he he was he was involved with me for a long time in my career. But I'd, I'd sort of Stop! Stop being with Frank, um, and he decided to come back on board, and and he didn't really do anything massively, but I think, just think the fact I needed someone there to sort of sort of reassure you and say, look, this is you know there is nothing wrong with your game. You just you know a couple of tweaks, and this this has worked really hard, and mm-hmm. and I did. I mean, I just you know what you know what my bollocks off, excuse the French, before that before that World Championship, and 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 managed to get my game into. Um, a, a decent shape, um, and you know it was it was a it was a it was a tough draw I had. I played the, the sort of I played the, the the late Paul Hunter in the first round, which was a really tough draw to get. Mm. Um, went got, got through that, and, and and as I say, we ended up beating Mark Williams um, in, in the final. Yeah, and uh, I guess was that some kind of vengeance for the Masters title, the uh, the, the very famous ten nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was. It, it was. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I wasn't really thinking about that. But um, again, yeah, I mean, I mean, very, usually when I got to the finals of the World Championship, I didn't, I didn't really think I was going to lose. It was, I was just so comfortable in that one table situation um, at, at the Crucible. It was my favourite place to play. Um, so yeah, even though it was Mark, um, I was, I was very confident of, of winning that match. Uh, Steve, I just got a couple of. Other questions, they might seem a bit tangential, but are you, um, within the system, I know Barry Hearn has set up this uh, kind of uh, ranking system there that you can have like the, the older dudes come back uh, for some mm. exclusive pass. I think uh, Steve Davis mm. exercised it and it will be open to a few other legends of the tour. Is there any chance that you'll be coming back and using that license? Um, well, I'm... And, uh... I mean, it's a, the, the, we 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 were given Steve Davis, me, and I think James Watana, who was a, a famous player from Thailand mm-hmm. around about the nineties, were given these wild cards. Uh, and and as long as there was space in each tournament, and if the, in, the full quota of entries wasn't taken up, we'd be offered a place. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, for this, this the end of last season, he took that off us. 
Ah. <laughs> so so we 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 we're no longer um, able to play in all the tournaments. We 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 can play in the world championship, um, but that's it. So right. it's, um, it's 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 so yeah, I mean I, I I do miss it. I mean, I would like to play in the odd event, but as I say, that's been taken off off as an and I'm certainly not going to go to Q school and, and try and qualify to be to be a pro again. Um, <laughs> but um, so so it's uh, yeah, it's it's, un, it's unfortunate. Oh, um, you're kidding? Because uh... because when 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 I did have the World Cup the last couple of years for for various reasons, you know, personal and and on on the table, it was you know it wasn't really in a good frame of mind to play. So. It's unfortunate now that I quite fancy playing the other event. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you spending most of your time now? Uh, well, I go to China quite a lot. I do still do quite a lot of work over there. Um, I'm an ambassador for uh, a type of Chinese eight ball pool. Um, one of the main manufacturers of the tables out there. Um, so I go around China basically as ambassador for that. And, you know, I've been around about fifty, sixty cities in the last four years for them. Awesome. Um, just just traveling around. But, I mean, basically, I'm just. Eating, drink, eating, drinking my way around China. I'm not, I'm not doing anything competitive. Um, I still do, obviously, my work on the BBC um, as, as, as a pundit and a commentator, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the, the, the ITV tournaments this year as well. So, Excellent. so yeah, I'm, I'm still involved in the game. Um, as I say, I do miss it, especially Sunday nights. Um, but uh, yeah, I, apart from that, just I do the odd exhibition. Still, still get my cue. Maybe have a game for a couple of hours if, if I'm bored. But um, yeah, yeah, keep, keep pretty, keep pretty busy. Well, Stephen, I could probably have you on the phone for a good couple of hours, but I know you've you've got more important stuff to do. <laughs> but um, listen, thanks for taking the time out. I, it does sound like you've you've almost been put out to stud, as it were. But I'd, I'd much like to see you back on the TV. And if you've got that license to turn up at the World Championship, that that'd be great to see you on that again. I know where uh, Davis did that this year. I think it was for the last time. Yeah, right? yeah. The, the the only problem is you've got to go to a bloody leisure centre and, and play three qualifying matches, which doesn't mm. really inspire me too much. Um, if the qualifying was at the Crucible, um, it would definitely be a serious consideration. But um, no, I, when you've played at the Crucible and you've played at uh, you know the, the Wembley, Old Wembley Conference Centre in front of 3,000 people, playing in a leisure centre where people are walking past with their rubber rings to go swimming, it doesn't really inspire. <laughs> I've, I've actually seen some of those games. So I've, I've been down to Pontins, I think they have a few down there. Um, right. And they, yeah. well, obviously you know what it's like and they play a few, <laughs> to a very few people and it must be hard to actually get motivated and even you know even yeah, be asked. yeah very much yeah. so it was it, it was one of the reasons that, that I, I did retire that, that a lot of the tournaments um ptcs and things like that were played in sort of room, little cubicles with like nobody watching it was just basically you your opponent and a referee mm. and it was just a bit soul destroying um you know and you, you need a bit of inspiration as you get on in years to sort of make yourself calm make you make yourself nervous because if you're not nervous you can't play yeah well i mean I have heard that. I mean, I've watched a few of these uh, qualifying games on the streaming, um, and I've mm-hmm. got a friend that goes to them, and he says, "Look, the Jimmy White one against, I think it was Gerard Green for the World Championship. That was incredibly raucous." He said that was so tribal; it was like a football game. Um, so mm. people are starting to attend them. I think maybe as, yeah, um, you know, certain people like yourselves and like the older guys that have been on the circuit for a long time, they they still want to see them compete and play. So they, you'll still get numbers to these. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's right. That's right. Cool. Well, look, uh, thanks, Tim. I'll, uh, I'll send you a link to the podcast when it goes live. Yeah, please. And uh, thanks thanks again for taking the time out. All right. No problem, Pete. Okay. Cheers, Tim. Take care. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.